Did you know, as of a few days ago, there's a production ready EV that can go 1000 miles on a single charge. That's about double the current long range EV King, which is the Lucid Air, and it comes in at less than a third of its price. Not only does this EV have insane range, it also stole a play out of Tesla's playbook, which gives it a huge advantage over the competition. This handle does 250 kilowatts of charging and you plug it in just like that. This is the top five reasons why you, yes you, should buy an Aptera. From its solar panels to its absolutely nutty efficiency, this EV is my current top pick. So let's get right into it and start with its record-breaking range. Aptera claims the top spec version can get 1,000 miles of range on a single charge. Not only is that better than any production EV available today, it's well over triple the range of the current best-selling EV, which is the Tesla Model 3. Usually when we're talking EV range, you might get 50 miles or even 100 miles better better than the rest, but this one can legitimately get 600 miles more than its closest competition. Now, to be totally fair, it is only a two-seater sedan, whereas the Model 3 has five seats, but that trade-off of either three seats or 700 miles of range is a choice you might have to think about. Three seats, 700 miles of range, three seats, 700 miles of range. And that's not even mentioning the price. We're gonna get to that in a sec, but I need to give a quick disclaimer. I'm currently invested in Aptera and I really want to see them succeed, but the reason I invested with them is because I believe in their mission, which is more sustainable transportation. And it's so clear when you see what they're doing and you listen to interviews with the CEOs and with employees, that they really believe in what they're doing and they're trying to make a positive impact on the world. And that's why I'm trying to raise awareness for this company. And with that in mind, if you want to pre-order one and you want a discount on that pre-order, use my link for 30% off the reservation fee. Full disclosure, if we get 26 people to pre-order, they're going to ship us one. And that's my big, hairy, audacious goal. And crazy enough, we're already at eight people. So huge thank you to the people who have already pre-ordered using my code. And if we do end up getting an Aptera, I guarantee I will make loads of reviews and hands-on videos of whatever you guys want to see. I'm really excited about this company and this vehicle. So if you want to make that happen, which would be awesome, the referral code is down below. Aptera is entering a market that's totally unique. I don't even want to call it a vehicle. I want to call it Aptera because the only thing you're going to see in the marketplace like this is an Aptera. Next, we have Aptera's solar charging capabilities. Generally speaking, the reason you don't see solar panels on other EVs is because EVs are relatively heavy and inefficient compared to how much electricity solar panels produce, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. The Aptera, on the other hand, flips the script entirely because of its mind-blowing efficiency. For example, the Aptera weighs about 1,800 pounds, whereas the Model 3 weighs over double that at around 4,000 pounds. Now, now, yeah, to be totally fair, the Model 3 is bigger and has a full five seats, but even still, the Aptera is insanely light and it's in large part because of its unique monocoque design and its use of ultralight yet strong composite materials. And it isn't just light, this thing is slippery. Where the Model 3 has a 0.23 drag coefficient, which is actually really good, it's one of the most slippery cars on the road, the Aptera is about twice as slippery at just 0.13, which is almost unheard of. Combining its ultra low weight and next to no drag, solar panels actually make sense and can give owners up to 40 miles of extra range every single day. That means for the average American who drives about 30 miles a day, they would never have to plug it in. Just think about that for a second. Imagine never having to go to the gas station or never having to plug your car in. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even seem real. And yes, the solar panels will have less output during the winter, especially if you live farther north. But even still, free miles are free miles. And adding extra solar panels is surprisingly affordable. The base spec Aptera comes with some solar panels for up to 16 miles per day, but for just 900 bucks, you can cover the entire thing with solar and get that maxed out 40 mile version. When was the last time you were specking out a car and upgrading features actually seemed like it was a good value?
value. It's never happened to me. <laughs> that transitions us perfectly to the next category, which is affordability. One of the main problems with EVs as a whole, at least right now, is that they are generally speaking more expensive than their gas counterparts. Now, luckily for EV owners, depending on the model that you get, you can actually make back a lot of that investment, if not all of it, due to cheaper fuel costs and lower maintenance costs. But a lot of people simply don't have 60 grand that they can drop on a new car, regardless of how much money it would save them in the long run. And that's probably the most impressive part to me about Aptera. It's not just that it has insane range and really cool features, it's that it comes in at a relatively affordable price point, starting at just $26,000. Compare that to the base spec Model 3, which starts at $47,000, and you start to realize just how affordable the Aptera really is. Actually, check this out. If we fully kit out the Aptera with 1,000 miles of range and as much solar as we can put in it, it still comes in just below the base spec price of the Model 3. It's some real next level value that they're offering. Again, like we talked about earlier, it's not a great comparison between these cars. It is not apples to apples. If you need more than two seats, for example, the Aptera isn't for you. But if you're someone like me who rarely has more than two people in the car, the Aptera might be a good choice. Oh, and I forgot to mention trunk space. The Aptera has a surprisingly large trunk at 25 cubic feet compared to the Model 3's 20. Although if you include the Model 3's frunk, then basically they have the same amount of storage. Not everybody is going to be able to afford a $65,000 or $75,000 vehicle. We can't talk about affordability without talking about repairability, and the Aptera knocks it out of the part in this section. They've taken the most aggressive right to repair stance that I've seen in the entire automotive industry, and that's clearly what's best for customers. They've committed to shipping customers the parts they need to fix things, and because parts can't fix themselves, they also are including scannable QR codes on the parts themselves themselves, which will link to repair documents and video guides. If you're a Tesla nerd like me, you've probably seen the channel Rich Rebuilds, and if you haven't, check him out. He's hilarious. I love his stuff. But one of the takeaways from that channel is that Tesla can be notoriously difficult to get parts from. And what that difficulty leads to is more Teslas being totaled simply because repairs can be too expensive and difficult to do. Rich ends up doing some crazy shit to get genuine Tesla parts. Lots of the times he scraps them from dead Teslas because he cannot get Tesla to send him the parts or the guides that he needs to do the repair. This is in direct contrast to Aptera's approach, and the bottom line is, when it comes to doing the best thing for the planet, it is almost always better to fix a thing that you already have versus buying a new thing. While Aptera and Tesla do have their differences, they have one similarity that is a huge benefit to Aptera buyers, the charging port. Aptera took a play out of Tesla's playbook and they're using Tesla's supercharger connector. We don't know for sure, but it looks like Aptera owners are gonna get access to Tesla's entire supercharger network, which is a huge win for Aptera. Terra. That means if you're looking to do any road tripping at all, this will most likely be the best road tripping vehicle that there is. With insane range and access to the largest and most reliable charging network there is. It's hard to overstate just how big of a deal it is for Aptera to get to use Tesla's superchargers. So while the Aptera and the Tesla Model 3 might not be an apples to apples comparison, I think there's a good amount of people who could benefit from the Aptera's industry leading range and efficiency. But I'd like to know in the comments, would you rather get an Aptera or would you rather have a Tesla Model 3? And let me know why. The Aptera clearly has some limitations, especially being a two-seater. But for some people like me, that's not a deal breaker. And I would rather have the longer range, better efficiency and the solar charging, mostly because I think solar charging is really cool. But maybe I'm just crazy. As always, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're the reason I can keep making videos like this. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you like the video, give me a like and subscribe or pre-order an Aptera using my link. And if you love the video, consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you find an article that's pushing an agenda or spreading misinformation or taking advantage of consumers or whatever it is, send it my way. My info, like always, is down below. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.